This is a Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid. It's the fastest and most powerful Panamera Porsche currently makes. It takes a gas-powered V8 and pairs it with electric motors that drive this full-size four-door sedan into acceleration levels that would be considered hypercar maybe five to ten years ago. So this Panamera is extremely fast, but driving a fast sports car is vastly different than a fast sedan. And even then, not all fast sedans are created equally. So what does this Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid have to offer that others don't? All right, so let's start it off by talking about what makes this the Turbo SE Hybrid model. And of course, that's the mechanics beginning with the engine. So this is a four liter twin turbocharged V8 that by itself produces 564 horsepower and 567 pounds feet of torque. It's made it to an eight speed PDK transmission and it's putting power down to all four wheels. Now the E-Hybrid in the name means it's got a battery and that is a 17.9 kilowatt an hour capacity that generates 134 horsepower and 295 pounds-feet of torque. Now the battery gives the Panamera the ability to drive up to 31 miles just on electric power. And speaking of power, the combined output is a monstrous 690 horsepower and 641 pounds-feet of torque. Now all that power translates to a 0-60 to 60 time of 3 seconds flat. And this Panamera will also rumble all the way up to a top speed of 196 miles an hour. Speaking of top speed, the electric battery has the ability to travel up to speeds of 87 miles per hour on electric only. Next, let's talk suspension and because this is the top of the line Panamera, it gets all the special equipment as standard. Air suspension with PASM, 21 inch wheels, 16 and a half inch carbon ceramic brakes with 10 piston calibers, Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus, Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control Sport, and finally, rear wheel steering with Power Steering Plus. So since I've already reviewed the Panamera GTS and I go into a lot of depth on the interior for that video, which I'll link in the description below, I'm just going to skim through this so we can get on to the driving portion. Now the interior space in here is just wonderful. Of course, because this is the turbo, you get some upgraded leather and the quality is very high. I'm sitting in a 14-way seat, which comes as standard, and I'm not really sure why not the 18-way, considering this is the top of the line, but for the extra $1,500, I would get the 18-way seats. Next, one item to note is the center console. I am a fan of the way this looks and its functionality. But having driven the new Cayenne with the simplified and cleaned up center area, I much prefer that over this. Otherwise, the infotainment and the technology are also great in here. The screen is crisp, the infotainment system is clear and responsive. Next, the back seats, and you only have two seats here because remember, this is still a four-door coupe. But Porsche does give you the option for a two plus one seating configuration. And for an extra thousand dollars, that's an option I would definitely check. Now the size, it's actually pretty good. Sitting behind myself at five foot 11, I have good amounts of headroom and legroom. The overall comfort and quality are also great. The same as what you would get in the front. There's a nice size screen that allows passengers to control the environment back here. Heated and cooled seats, four zone climate controls, charging capability, and you've even got some glass above you to peek out of. Finally, the trunk, good amount of room here as well. Easily enough room for two larger pieces of luggage. I imagine this would be a great weekend getaway car and the rear seats fold down as well if you needed a little bit more room. All right, so let's see what this thing's got. Put it in drive, release parking brake, and Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid. And to start it off, I'm going to be in e-charge mode, and I'll explain these modes a little bit later on, but know that I'm running just on the V8 because I wanted to test exactly how fast the V8 is and then add on the battery and see if there's a significant significant difference in power so chassis in sport plus 
chassis height will automatically adjust to its lowest setting. Manual shift mode, put it in first gear. And let's see what this 570 some odd V8 generates or how fast this thing is. So, first gear. Oh, wow. <laughs> ah, wow. Jeez. Okay, the V8 by itself is already just ballistically fast. Mash. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, unbelievable. Wow, the V8 by itself is already just absolutely, absolutely insane. All right, straight road. Now, let's go ahead and put it in Sport Plus. So this is going to use both the battery and the engine. Mash. Oh my God. And even though that was a short pull, you can immediately notice the extra battery power that you're getting from that 17.9 kilowatt an hour battery or the extra power that it's giving you. Let's go again here now from a little bit of a roll back to first gear and it's immediate. Oh, it just warp speed. It almost just sucks your brain out of your head and yeah, the question I was asking earlier, is there a difference? There is absolutely a difference with the hybrid battery turned on and it's remarkably fast. This is insane that a car that, this mo that has this much weight and this size is this fast. Oh, makes your head hurt. Oh my God, wow. <laughs> to say this is fast is an understatement. This acceleration, at least in a straight line, is basically like bordering EV levels of performance and pure just sports car and turn turning radius there is unbelievable. Here we go again. Oh my God. This is a very big number. Wow. Absolutely astonishing how fast this car is. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I don't wanna get into trouble. Let's put it in uh, hybrid mode. And let me tell you about the rest of this car. So the brakes, the carbon ceramics, they're absolutely wonderful for a car with this much weight and this much power. But I will tell you that it's not the same carbon ceramic brake as what I've driven in other sports cars uh, from Porsche, meaning uh, the, there the brake pedal is a little grabbier here in the Panamera. It requires a little bit more effort, but still once you're in it and once you're going, these brakes absolutely stop this car and are wonderful for this much power and the size of this car. Now let's switch it over into the suspension. And there's a couple ways to mess around with suspension feel in this car. So you've got PASM and you've also got the ride height. Now let's talk about the sportiest setting. So lowest ride height and uh, PASM in Sport Plus. And in these settings, this car is unbelievable on how well balanced and managed the weight is. The dynamic shocks or the air shocks and the dynamic dampers do a unbelievable job of hiding the weight of this car. Now remember, this is not only the most powerful Panamera, it is also the heaviest Panamera because of the extra battery weight. And uh, the PASM and the air shocks working together absolutely mask the weight as best as they possibly can. Kudos to Porsche for doing a wonderful job with the suspension tuning here. Off camera, I drove it around a little bit, gave it a little bit of a nudge, of course, not driving in the, uh, in the mountain roads or on a track, but I could absolutely feel that this car is tailored for a sporty driving experience, specifically in those higher performance modes for the ride height and the suspension. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, when I put the chassis in normal and the chassis height in regular, the ride comfort is good. 
And I say good because I've driven the new S580 from Mercedes and I've also driven the prior generation S63. And both of those cars feel more comfortable than this in terms of general ride comfort and things like that. Uh, but that's not to say that this is bad. This is absolutely comfortable, more than adequate enough for uh, a GT Cruiser, uh, cross country, daily driving. It would f do admirably in any of those situations. But when you compare it to uh, the S63, which is still sporty and stiff, but less sporty and stiff than this car, and of course the, ba the base Mercedes S580, this isn't as comfortable or as, I don't know, maybe not luxurious is not the right word, uh, supple riding, soaking up the bumps. There's definitely more sportiness in this car compared to the cars that I just mentioned. And even more so when you compare it to the S580. So if you're looking for something that's most comfort oriented, look at some of those Mercedes products. Uh, compared to the Panamera. Now, if you are looking for the sport along with the comfort, this is a wonderful, wonderful balance of that. Obviously, this is a Porsche product and you're just gonna get more sportiness out of this by its general nature of it being a Porsche product. Now, let me tell you about those electric drive modes. So, there's a couple of them. Uh, drive mode, you have e-power, and e-power essentially shuts off the motor, the ICE motor, and you drive around using electric power. And as I mentioned earlier on, you have 31 miles of range once it's fully charged. And this feels like a regular electric car, like as you would expect. Then there's e-hybrid, which combines both of the powertrains, but it's a little interesting how Porsche has set it up. So within hybrid, there's hybrid auto, e-hold and e-charge. So hybrid auto, it makes the decision, the car does, which powertrain to use. Then there's e-hold, which means don't use the battery power at all because I want to conserve it for whatever reason. And then there's e-charge, which turns on the ICE engine, so the combustion engine, and then it uses the brake regeneration along with some of the trickery that Porsche is doing to charge the battery. So even if you don't plug this car in, you still have the ability to charge the battery while you're on the go. And then you've got Sport and Sport Plus, and this turns on everything, whether you like it or not, it uses the battery and the internal combustion engine at the same time, and you get that full 690 horsepower. It's unbelievable that a car of this size, of this character, uh, of this purpose, a four-door sedan, has almost 700 horsepower and is just unbelievably, unbelievably fast. So what is this thing? If you're looking for unparalleled sportiness in your full-size luxury executive sedan, then then look no further. This is as sporty as you're gonna get in this segment. Now, the power is also unbelievable, 700 horsepower. And on the flip side, you still get the Porsche experience inside. The overall comfort, the quality, the luxury, the infotainment, and just the, as I mentioned, the overall Porsche experience. So that's all I've got. Let's wrap it up with some final thoughts. So that's the Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid. It's an absolutely amazing piece of machinery. It's quite expensive, yes, but in my opinion, it's worth every penny. Why? Because it's one of those cars that can do everything and do it very, very well. Speed, it's definitely got that in spades. Comfort, yep. Style and luxury, absolutely. Storage, more than enough. So if you're somebody who's looking to buy a four-door luxury, sporty, full-size executive sedan and have the money to spend, you cannot go wrong with this car. So that's all I've got. If you've got any questions, please make sure you leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.